What is up, ladies and gentlemen, man here. Welcome back to the channel. It is time for another Andromeda Wall episode. We've got a couple of new boulders here, and I'm gonna try to focus a little bit more on the um, analytic component of these boulders in this episode. Um, first off, we're starting with something not super hard, double pinch, 7A slash plus. Um, we've got only wooden screw-ons for stepping, which kind of makes it interesting from a technique and stepping perspective. And we've also, as the name suggests, uh, have a lot of pinches in this boulder, actually. The first one I'm going to attack with my left hand in this situation. And as you can see, if you have a you know situation like this where you have two pinches kind of close together and really on top of each other, these pinches are actually bad in this situation, really have to be pinched hard. Um, in order to be able to hold your, you know, gravitational force in this situation. Um, moving to the right into a Gaston. As always with Gastons, you know, we want to try with the opposite foot to kind of press ourselves into the Gaston to be able to perform the next move, which is a move on another pinch, you know, with the left hand here. And then the right hand, so to say, joins the left hand on this next pinch. And here we yet again have the same situation as before. Two pinches really close together. We have to pinch them really hard. We can't really utilize them as side pulls. Getting our feet to the right side again. A um, little bit of a back step there. Big move onto this blue jug and big move onto the top jug, which is really good. So yeah, um, just trying to, you know, get some pinch power into this boulder basically by placing pinches close to each other so that you can't utilize them as side pulls, which is what usually occurs when you space them apart quite a lot. Next boulder, the camo peel. <laughs> And one, you know, it doesn't really have a lot of technical elements. Um, the second hold is, so to say, the camo pill. This is the hold after which this, bowl, this boulder is named. Something that's interesting there is that on the third move, we actually have to step the starting hold with the left foot while we have this kind of guest on, you know, edge with our right hand to set up the next move, which is kind of dynamic because the starting hold is really bad for stepping. It is kind of this double jug for left and right hand, but you know, in a vertical fashion, this foothold is really bad. So what this leads to is that we have to execute the next move kind of dynamically. And only as soon as we grab the next hold with the left hand again, we are able to release that left foot from that bad starting foothold. Let's see that one more time in slow-mo. And as you can see here, the next foothold, which is the camo pill itself for the right foot, is good again. So this allows us to make the next move almost statically. So this is again just a little bit of a, you know, trying to get some sense into why we have to execute certain moves dynamically, why we have to, why we are able to um, execute certain moves, you know, statically. It also really depends on the quality of your footholds. If you if you can't really trust your footholds, you know, to hold your body strength on a in a static fashion, then it might make a lot more sense to jump dynamically for the next hold to kind of you know bridge the gap. So let's take a look at what we've got next. Ah, I think that's gonna be a little bit of a harder one already. Um, the Molar, 7C slash plus, two screw-ons for starting. So the boulder is called after this uh, white hold up there, which kind of looks like a Molar tooth. Really big move, left hand, first move. Then we've got this beautiful flag on the starting hold, which allows us to not have to make a, uh, you know, foot switch later on for this dyno to this side pinch there. Really cool move. And then you instantly have to hit your, um, you know, foothold again with the right foot because you can't allow to swing out there, you know, like 10 times because these holds are actually pretty bad. Getting the right hand onto the molar itself, which is actually a pretty bad edge, although it looks kind of slopey. And then we've got something interesting with the left hand. We gotta turn around the left hand, gotta turn this pinch around so that we can pinch it from the other direction. And this allows us actually to um, make the next big move up to this kind of, you know, really shallow green edge. And then we have to let go of the feet, step this edge from before really getting the body strength engaged and getting the left hand further onto the molar again, which I find personally pretty interesting because we have to get this uh, pinch free to be able to step it with the left foot, which is basically the next thing that happens. And then we find ourselves in a pretty, pretty interesting situation because the top hole is super far to the left. And we can't really, you know, it's really hard to generate momentum out of this situation. 
the only um, possibility that we have basically is pushing with our right foot. And this is what we're doing, we're trying to, you know, get some swing into the body and pushing ourselves to the um, top jug and everything that we have to achieve here is essentially that the left hand comes close enough to the top jug because the top jug itself is going to be so good that we're going to hold it anyway, right? So let's take a look at this one more time without the, you know, without the cuts and the, the slow-mo and stuff. Big left hand, right hand, jump to the pinch, catching the right foothold again, the molar right hand, turning around the left hand, big move right hand, letting the feet go, and then fishing this, um, this foothold there, getting the left hand further on the molar, big move. I don't know. I really like this move. The, these moves. It's actually my favorite boulder of these of this episode. I have to say. And then we've got a boulder that I already analyzed in the previous, you know, double dino versus one hand dino episode. Dinosaur. Um, pretty nice. Pretty nice dinos there. First of all, this one, which you can execute as a one hand or double dino, as I showed. And then two more really dynamic moves to these um, to this big top hold, you know, really connecting a few of the best holds on this wall together in a really jumpy dyno fashion. So let's see what we have next here. I think this was the the alien head. This is another pretty nice boulder. Um, 7C, I think, in the grading. As you can see, a little bit more complex in terms of footholds and you know holds. We've got a lot of holds there. And it basically evolves around um, grabbing this alien head holes in the middle of the wall, in the very center of the wall. Here we have this pinch, and this left pinch is actually skippable, as I found out later. But um, I didn't know that yet in this situation, so I incorporated it, it in this boulder. It doesn't really make it harder to skip it, actually. Then we have to swing our feet, you know, as soon as we have the right hand onto the alien head, which is a really bad sloper. We have to kind of fish those footholds together, which are on the right side of the of the alien head. And here I just didn't have enough friction on the on the alien head itself, so I had to try it again. So let's take a look at it one more time. As you can see, I'm trying to dry my hands there. Because it's really essential to have dry hands on this alien head sloper. So big move, first pinch, kind of guessed on me, and then second pinch, <clears throat> big move onto the alien head. As you can see, this is really body strengthy. Um, you gotta engage, engage your core here to be able to not lose your foot in an uncontrolled fashion from this starting hold. And then losing the feet in a controlled fashion, fishing this, um, this side foothold there on the other side, which worked really well in this attempt, and then crossing under onto the second part of the alien head, and then something really interesting happens, I think. The left foot is able to make, to get some kind of toe hook out of this um, green shard down there. And in this situation, we really have to press right foot on top of the foothold and left foot in the other direction in this kind of toe hook fashion. And it just so happens that it is a that it is possible to make a back step kind of motion in this situation, and this allows you actually to grab over onto this side pull pinch on the other side. Foot switch, big move to this slopey um, side pull thing, and big dyno uh, as as a as a finishing move. So this was another really really cool boulder, I think, because this kind of trick with the toe hook and the the um, back step. I, uh, I can't remember a single bowler where I had that before, so it was pretty fun to find out about that solution. And then at last, we have something easier again, as I recall. Yes, this was the, the banana bowler, I think. Um, it's kind of similar to a bowler that I already showed in one of the Andromeda wall episodes. Yeah, again, it's called banana. <laughs> Everything for stepping allowed, 6C roughly. And we have here basically connected with each other a couple of the better holes on the wall. Um, all these holes, they are quite good. Not so much technique involved here because we can step everything really. Um, and then this big crossover from this green undercling and then basically another slight dyno to the top hole. So it really evolves around being able to hold this banana hole, which is actually a pretty bad sloper. So that's already it for this Andromeda Wall episode. I hope um, it was somehow informational, somehow entertaining for you guys and dropped some training motivation to you. 
it's going great here. I hope you're having a great time as well. Drop some thumbs up and comments. That's always appreciated. And I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.